We're talking NFL Draft with NFL.com draft analyst Chad Ryder. Who does he like for the Giants? Who are some of his sleeper picks? All that and more coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Trana, and I'm back, back in the New York groove. Okay, yeah, I was listening to Kiss. Yeah, I know. But uh, seriously, I'm back after uh, taking yesterday uh, off due to some unexpected circumstances. But here I am, I'm back with more shows for you, as promised. And as promised, I have today on the show... NFL.com draft analyst Chad Ryder. Uh, he came on the show and we talked about about a, about a half hour um, about the draft and a lot of good information. So that interview is on tap for today. So um, before I play that interview, I want to quick thank everybody who sent in some ideas for a live Locked on Giants podcast for Friday. You know, this this week, folks, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm I'm going to pass on the uh, the live show for Friday, but um, I got your ideas. I'll mull them over, see which ones are logistically possible to do. I would like to do another live show with you guys and gals. Maybe we'll do something next week. I don't know, but uh, certainly that is on the the uh, my bucket list to do for this podcast. So, with that said. Let's get into the interview with NFL.com draft analyst, Chad Ryder. All right, Giant fans, welcome to the Locked on Giants podcast. I am Patricia Trana, and as promised, I am joined by Chad Ryder of NFL.com. He is one of the draft analysts there, and uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Chad underscore Reuter, R-E-U-T-E-R, and you can also catch him during draft weekend. NFL Network provides live coverage of the 2022 draft from Las Vegas, April 28th through the 30th. He will be part of that coverage, both on NFL.com and, of course, on the NFL Network. Chad, thank you so much for taking the time to come on with me. Yeah, thanks for the invite. appreciate it. All right, I'm excited to talk draft. We're getting close. Hard to believe yeah. that after weeks and weeks, we are actually within uh, two weeks, I think, right? Two I, weeks, I yeah. Two weeks from today, yes, exactly. So, all right, let's 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 kick this off, Chad. I want to get your assessment overall of this draft class. Now, everybody you talk to has different opinions about where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are. Some people say that this is a strong enough class if you just know where to look. What's your overall take on this class? Yeah, for the most, like every year we ask that question and, you know, the, a lot of people will make more out of certain classes than others, but in reality, they're pretty much the same as every year, you know? Um, but I think, I think there's good depth at a few positions. I think wide receiver, there's good depth. There might not be like an elite top five guy, but there's a lot of guys on day one and day two, they're going to go and they're going to be productive early in their careers. Edge rushers, there's the same situation. There's going to be actually this year, uh, unlike last year, there's going to be a lot of guys up in the top 10 or 12, unlike last year. And then there's also good depth. So you're going to be able to find a guy in the second, third, and fourth round who will come in and give you a spark off off the bench and sub packages, things like that, to to, to go get the quarterback. Um, cornerback, there's good uh, there's good depth as well. I know a lot of people are panning the quarterback class, but I think the, there's some pretty good quarterbacks that are going to go in the first round as well. Um, later in the draft, maybe not as much, but uh, I think we'll see some names off the uh, off the top as well. Um, tight end, there's great depth in uh, rounds two, three, four. There's going to be a lot of tight ends picked in that part of the draft. So you can find a lot of different play, a lot of different types of players throughout the draft. 
So yeah, sounds like it. I mean, and of course, the positions you mentioned just so happen to be areas where the New York Giants can use some help, use some like everybody help. else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Chad, what what's some of the buzz that you're hearing? I know a lot of times the media and the fans they hear certain buzz, and it's a little different than what we hear or what the NFL uh, scouting community hears. What's starting now to catch up outside of that NFL community? Do you think? Well, I think. You know, I've been high on the quarterbacks for a long time. I think we're starting to see people kind of come around to some of these guys. And that happens pretty regularly. Um, guys like Dem Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati is getting a lot of first round talk now that he wasn't through the year. And that wasn't, by the way, just media. That was also NFL people <laughs> that I talked to. Um, and, and everybody kind of decides, hey, these quarterbacks are actually pretty good. We don't have to just you know, uh, pick apart everything that they do on the field as, uh, you know, as college players. So I think the quarterbacks are starting to come up. Um, but the, to be honest, there's so much noise right now, uh, and it's really hard to determine which noise is going to actually play out and which isn't. So usually when that happens, I take a step back and I say, okay, what did I think of this player while he was actually on the field? And guys like Devin Lloyd from Utah stuck out. Jermaine Johnson from Florida State stuck out. And some of these guys that didn't get a lot of you know hype early now are starting to get a little more press as people kind of get away from the combine and back sort of to the film. Because we're, you know, we're we're creatures of of recency bias, right? We see the combine, we see this stuff, and then you know, eventually we say, okay, well, maybe I'll pop in that tape again and see. So I think some of these guys you see um, will start getting back into the consciousness of people. Drake London from USC, the receiver. Um, Iki Ikuanu, who is the Giants, you know, got to have some interest in up at the top of the draft. So, it, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting time of year. For sure, definitely. Now, who are some of the players you think, you know, maybe that we weren't talking about them as much, but they really help themselves with the pro day? And how much exactly does the pro day help a guy stock or hurt his stock if he doesn't perform well? Well, I think pro days um, are really helpful for guys later in the draft to try to, because they didn't get a combine invite. And because they weren't there, they they have to wait until the pro day to really work out for teams. You're talking about guys that are later in the draft. Usually the, as far as guys uh, up in the draft this year, we had a couple of guys in Georgia who helped themselves with the pro days. Um, Trevon Walker was certainly one of them. He's a guy that was great at the combine, but he also showed off some stuff at the pro day. So he actually kind of double dipped it this year. Um, but later in the draft, I think is really where those guys get helped. Um, pro day guys get helped. And, um, you know, now that you're asking me this question, nobody is coming to my mind whatsoever, but, but I could tell you that, um, they have, they have tons of guys that are, um, that, that really did help themselves. All right, giant fans, still more to come on today's podcast, but first there's only one place that has the best information for all the latest odds, contests, and player props for all your sports betting needs. And that is betonline.net. From the basketball playoffs to baseball to hockey, UFC, boxing, the upcoming Triple Crown, you name it, and betonline.net has you covered. It is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite, favorite Vegas casino games. So head on over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the games start. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. But first, Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, but without the calories and without the sugar. Most Built Bars contain about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein, and they taste great. Built Bar offers 9 amazing flavors in nut and nut-free varieties, plus a rotating limited time offering of different flavors that changes up every few weeks. So head on over to BuiltBar.com and see what their current flavor lineup looks like and use our special promo code LOCKED15 to save 15% off your first order. Again, that's code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off your first order at BuiltBar.com. Um, let me ask you about the quarterback class. So, you know, a lot of people traditionally say, 
you know, if a team's going to trade up, it's going to be for a quarterback. And, and obviously there's a split opinion about this quarterback class. But I've also heard, and I, and I don't know if you've heard the same, that there could be some teams looking to come up to get one of the big, big three offensive tackles if the board falls a certain way. Could you see that scenario happening, or do you think this is just going to kind of be a stick to the board, you know, not a lot of movement in that first round type of deal? Uh, you know, I've – I spend many, many hours thinking about this. And and I think there typically is somebody interested in coming up for an offensive tackle or an offensive lineman in each first round is usually what happens. Um, you know, again, Iki Ikuanu, Evan Neal out of Alabama, Charles Cross from Mississippi State. I think what I'll, if, if there is movement, I think Charles Cross would be the guy that would be the one that, because usually when that kind of move happens, it's because – Teams have three guys with first round grade, first round grades, and the third one is now you know available, and that's it. Like the first two are off the board, so you see like the Chargers or the Saints or somebody like that wanting to get up into the top twelve picks, thirteen picks to try to get that last uh, really good offensive tackle on the board. So I think that that's really where the um, where it really I think would would happen is that sort of move to get that last guy. Yeah. Now, let me ask you about the offensive tackles, because that is one of the positions the Giants are strongly thought to be looking at. Joe Shane, the general manager, when he was with Buffalo, they never took an offensive lineman in round one. They always felt that they could get guys later in the draft. Is that necessarily the case here to where maybe the Giants might say, you know what, you all have us picking an offensive tackle with one of our picks. We're not going in that direction. We're going to go and we're going to wait till round two. I mean, that's possible. Um, I I think the talent is too good at the top, though. I think one of those two picks should go that way. And, and, you know, I've heard that they're going to stick with five and seven as their two picks. But, you know, you never know. Somebody wants a quarterback and you get up there and, and they might get too good of an offer to refuse. So if they could even move back a few picks, pick up a Charles Cross, for example, in the, in the middle of the round, uh, I, I think that would be good. And, and honestly, in my opinion, like the second round offensive tackles are not great this year. They're, they're fine. But I think if you really want a difference maker on the offensive line, I, I think you got to use a first round pick on them. Yeah, I agree with you. Now let's talk about those three, those top three picks, Cross, Neal, and Iquanu. Can you tell us a little bit about each one, and which one do you think would be maybe the best fit for the Giants? And I know that you know we still don't know what kind of offense the Giants are going to run, but yeah. just based on what we know from Dable's system up in Buffalo and and the system that Mike Kafka is coming from uh, from Kansas City. Well, I, I honestly think that the good thing about this year's group. Uh, Ikuanu and Neil is they both have versatility. They're able to play multiple positions. So that's really a bonus because you can put them anywhere you want. If you really want a dominating guard, you can well, actually either of them could do that, but Iguano would be like a special guard. If you can get him at number seven, um, Quentin Nelson, when it's six, I mean, this is not unusual uh, to, to get a guy that high and play him at guard, but he can also play tackle. If you want to play right tackle, he can go there. He played four spots this year. So, I mean, he, th- that's the good thing about this is that they can build the scheme. Usually you want to, you want to, you know, build the scheme around your players, not the other way around. Cause then you're putting, trying to put a, you know, uh, a round peg into a square hole. Right. So, so, but, but I think with Neil and Aquanu, both those guys could play inside or outside left tackle or right tackle. So that's, you know, that's great for the giants. They, they have all kinds of Charles cross, the third guy. Um, he worked out at right tackle at his pro day, which really helped him. He's one guy that his pro day helped because he was able to work some right tackle as well as a left tackle where he spent his time at Mississippi state. So if they feel like he can make that change over the right side, um, you know, that would be a big bonus for them. I and mean, he's, he's not really a guard, but, but I think as a tackle, he'd be a better fit as, as the right tackle. So that wouldn't be a shock to me if they took him early in the draft to play that right tackle, even though, you know, he played on the left side with the Bulldogs. Now, in your uh, top two dream pick articles for every team, you had Evan Neal for the Giants. Why Evan Neal? Well, I think, you know, they had, well, previous administration brought in Nate Solder. I mean, he's he's got that length for the right tackle spot. Um, 
you know, he might not be the smoothest pass protector of all time. You're not looking at Walter Jones or Joe Thomas if you put him at left tackle, but he can be a dominating force there in the run and really tough guy to, to, to beat on the edge because of his length and size. If you put that guy at right tackle, he's really going to get it. And you know what? The difference even between left and right tackle is so much less than it used to be because there are so many really good power rushers coming off that other side. So you get a guy with left tackle experience, put him on the right side, good pass protector, but really dominant. I think he's got all the things you want in that right tackle. And so I think he would be a perfect fit for them. All right. Now, the other guy you had in your top two dream picks was Sauce Gardner. And I have seen a debate, actually, amongst people who say, well, Stingley, uh, Derek Stingley of LSU is maybe the better uh, prospect. But Stingley, of course, has the injury issues, yeah. which I'm guessing is probably why Sauce might be a little ranked higher. Than, but, you know, that being said, why Sauce over, say, another position or, or even Stingley, assuming that, you know, his medicals have now checked out? Well, I think... I think sauce, what he brings is the real attitude to the corner position. And I think, you know, I think this group coming over from Buffalo, like those kind of guys. And, and I think that length and the height, I mean, he's, he's not dissimilar to Gilmore. And, and I think, um, I think if you, if they make that connection, um, he's, you know, gonna, they're going to like him quite a bit. And, and I think he, uh, he, he's got that again, he wasn't tested that often in college because he was so good, right? So mm -hmm. um, his his teammate wins the Jim Thorpe and Gardner's over there going, wait a minute, they never threw to me. So uh, I, I think his physicality and, and his toughness and his length really makes him a good fit for, for what this Giants team's going to – and makes him a good fit for a lot of teams, uh, honestly. But uh, I think he, they would be thrilled to get that guy, I, I think. When you look at the Giants, they have needs from – basically every position, yeah. but you can't solve all the needs with one draft. That's right. If they have to kind of defer one position or a couple positions, given the way that the talent is in this draft class, what are the positions that make the most sense to just say, all right, maybe we'll, pick, we'll worry about this next year? Yeah, um, I think they need to get tackle. They need to get edge rusher. Um, I think, and they'll get tight end a little bit later in the draft. Um, but if they don't get like a Gardner or something early, I think they can wait on cornerback, um, inside linebackers, you know, probably wait a little bit safety, probably wait a little bit, um, not a super deep class. They could, they can hold up for that a little bit and, and get a guy a little bit later that could, could fill that need for them. Um, running backs and an, another interesting one for this team. Um, I think they could definitely use depth there, but this isn't, and I didn't mention this earlier, but this is another class where I'm trying to do this far row mock draft and I'm trying to put these running backs in that fourth round somewhere. And, and I look, and there's still a list of like five or six really good running backs that could be available in the fifth round. So I think they can wait a little bit on that position as well. Yeah. I just did a mock draft. I think I had a running back going, uh, in the fifth round as well. And I was, yeah. and I looked it up and I was like, wow, he had a high grade on NFL.com, you know? So I was like yeah. kind of surprised that he was sitting there when I was running my simulator. Yeah. Right, a question I like to always ask of draft analysts is who are some of the guys, the sleeper picks guys that we're not really talking about that we should be. Well, you know, sleeper is a, there's so much coverage of this now, right? It's like, what are, what is a sleeper anymore? These like all these division three guys are getting into the senior bowl. So it's like, find me, find me a sleeper. Um, you know, a guy that I liked uh, that not everybody likes is Marquise Bell, safety out of Florida a and uh, He really played well early in the year against really good competition. Uh, I thought he was outstanding in the all-star game. He tested very well. I think he's a guy that, people should look out for in rounds three or four. That would be one guy. Another guy is Kate Otten, the tight end out of Washington. He had a really good 2020 season, but in 2021, his quarterback wasn't very good. He got COVID, knocked him out for a couple of weeks, and he also got injured. So he's a guy that's been flying under the radar a little bit. But if a team locks him up in round four, there's three or four again, uh, I think they'll get a. I think they'll get an outstanding player. And the last guy is uh, Skylar Thompson. He's a he's the quarterback from Kansas State. Not a lot of people are talking about him, but I think he's he's got he's the toolsy guy in this year's draft that's going to go early on day three, right? Like that teams think that they could really get something out of his skills. So um, 
I think those are the those are the guys that I look for kind of in the middle of the draft. And and uh, there's one guy I'll mention that's a little bit later, Tyquan Thornton from Baylor, speedster. Um, he's got he's really got a lot of Marquez uh, Valdez Scantling in him. It's like a deep threat. A lot of t- he's not the most consistent catching the ball, but hopefully he'll get better there. But I think if a team picks him up in the fifth, sixth round, they could really get something, you know, in a couple of years. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up with today's special guest, Chad Ryder of NFL.com and NFL Network. But first, Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. And you can see... In the picture right above there in the corner, that's me with my new Shady Rays. I absolutely love these sunglasses. They are so awesome. And you know, also, you won't find anywhere else is the fact that Shady Rays has an insane protection program. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair. They will send you a brand new pair if you lose them, no matter what happened. Uh, So give them a try, and if you don't love them, you pay nothing. It's as simple as that. Plus, 10 meals are donated to Fight Hunger in America when you shop Shady Rays. Exclusively for our listeners, head on over to ShadyRays.com. Use the code LOCKEDON to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code locked on for the best deal of the season. 50% off two pairs or more of Shady Ray sunglasses. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. But first, with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, there's only one place to find what you need quickly for your car or truck, and that's at rockauto.com. Rock Auto is a family-owned business with over 20 years of offering competitive pricing on thousands of parts for every make model and manufacturer check out their website today and don't forget to write down locked on in their how did you hear about us box so that they know we sent you rockauto.com amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car or truck will ever need rockauto.com i don't know how far you've gotten into looking at to next year's draft but i have to ask this question nonetheless because with the giants as you know there's some question as to whether or not Daniel Jones is the guy moving forward. So he's going to get this year, assuming, you know, they get the offensive line fixed once and for all. Everybody stays healthy. He takes to the system. You know, the the hope is that he is going to be the guy. That being said, if he proves not to be the guy, who are some early names that maybe Giant fans want to pay attention to in the upcoming college season? Well, I think you've got Bryce Young from Alabama, obviously, and they'll have to be picking very early to get a to get a look at him. Um, one guy that I think isn't being talked about, a, it's just starting to get people are starting to look into this a little bit. Will Levis from Kentucky. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be um, a, a player that play, people will watch him during the year, just like this group, and they'll be like, oh, he doesn't do that. Oh, he doesn't do that. Oh, he doesn't do that. Well, and then bam, he's going to be a top 10 pick because people scouts see the potential in him and see the toughness and the athleticism. A lot of the same things that, you know, people like with Daniel Jones. And uh, so I think that's a, that's a good name to really hear. And then of course, CJ Shrell from Ohio state's the other big name that a lot of people are going to be tossing around over the next, you know, year. Uh, And so I think those are the three guys that are, are really, you know, really up there right now in terms of, first round quarterbacks but as we see this year too there's going to be a couple more guys they're going to work their way in and we'll have to see how the fall plays out and you know another guy that it's a make or break year is Saquon Barkley and of course that's one of the most controversial picks in recent years amongst Giant fans because there were a lot of people who felt the Giants overdrafted him at number two at the time I know we're going back a little bit here but You know, how much, I mean, injuries have been such a factor for this this young man. That and coaching, I mean, do you think, based on what Saquon has shown, that he can ultimately be that number two pick, that guy that everybody thought was a special talent, or do you think he was just overdrafted? Well, I think it's really tough to draft a running back in the top ten anymore because of injuries and all that stuff. Ezekiel Elliott's the same way, right? 
um, Trent Richardson. You can go on and on with these guys. And there really hasn't been a legit top 10 guy who's played like that since Adrian Peterson, really. Um, Ladanian Tomlinson, you know, is another guy. So I think part of it was overdrafted. But the fact is um, that I think he's due for a bounce back here. I really do. Uh, I, I think this is – this is, and that's going to help Daniel Jones. And, and I think those two working together can really improve this offense this year. And so I'm, I'm bullish. Um, yeah, bullish. I was going to say bearish, bullish on, on Saquon. Uh, and, and I think, I think he's, he's really got tools. I mean, he, he's a fantastic talent. Again, I don't know that I would have taken him at number two, but, but look, he's got real talent. And I think if that team gets everything together, I think he'll, he's going to be in for a big year. All right. Now I want to ask you about the defensive side of the ball for a second here, because a position that a lot of people don't talk about for the Giants that I think is very key is nose tackle. They yeah. lost some depth along that, that defensive line. Austin Johnson went to the Chargers. You know, They haven't, for whatever reason, played uh, Dexter Lawrence at that nose tackle, even though he played that position at Clemson. Yeah. Who are some of the names we should be looking at? And P.S., I know the Giants signed a, a veteran nose tackle, but it, Justin right. Ellis, but just for one year. Who are some of the names we need to be paying attention to for that nose tackle? And where are we, should we be looking? Day two, day three, what round? Yeah, I mean, I think... Depending on if they like a guy like Travis Jones from from UConn, for example, you know, in the second round, that would be one guy. Um, Otito Ogiana from UCLA, really talented, nose tackle in the third round. That would be a good place to look. Um, and I think later in the draft as well, you can find these guys. There's a guy, Noah Ellis out of Idaho. His dad played in the league. Um, his brother is in the league, Caden. He was, he's a big boy, 367 pounds. He can he can hold down the middle of that front, and he could really get after a gap too. So that would be like a fourth, fifth round guy that I think they could look at, and, and if they want to, you know, use a later pick uh, at that position. And uh, and I mean, there's tons of that's the thing about nose tackles. You can find them a little bit later if you're truly just looking for a two down guy to to eat space. But um, Ellis is a really interesting guy that's going to be a mid round pick that I'd keep my eye out on for. At the top of the draft, you know, there's a lot of, I guess, uncertainty because we don't know what Detroit's going to do. We don't know what Houston's going to do. I mean, how is how is that playing up uh, in terms of, you know, teams running mock drafts? And, and how can that potentially um, tip the scale or, or upset the apple card if they do something that, that nobody saw coming? Yeah, I mean, I, look, these teams – they have not only like most people, when they do a mock draft, they say, okay, this is this pick. This is this pick. This is right. When you're a team, you have to think of what are the five guys that could go here? What are the six guys that could go here? Right? So you play out all these scenarios. And even if we don't know who is going to go one, two, three, and four, you pretty much know who the top four guys are going to be. So then if you're fifth, you have a pretty good idea of who's going to be available. So you know, whether you get the first four picks right, it's not as big of a deal for what their plan is. And so, and plus with, I mean, early in the draft, especially, right, you're, you're ranking every player anyway. So you're crossing those off no matter who goes when. And you're like, okay, this guy's next on our list. Is this the name we're going to call? And we get, yep, we're making that call. Boom. So it's a little bit different than, than doing mock drafts. And of course, later in the draft, you know, everybody's got different guys that they're looking at and it makes it a little easier to, to, to pick out that guy that that's kind of next on the list for them. All right. A couple more for you, Chad. Um, nobody really talks about undrafted free agents, but they can actually be nice little finds here. Who yeah. are some names that, you know, you're projecting might fall into that UDFA category that might be good fits for the giants that they might want to take a flyer on. Well, you know, that's the problem is projecting that far in the draft is very difficult because, you know, 250 picks, you know, who's going to be available after that, right? Um, let's just say that they want to pick um, a late round, late round wide receiver. Derek Young from Lenore, Line, Lenore Rhine, can't say the college, but he's a talented wide receiver. He's a big guy, can run. Again, inconsistent hands maybe might keep him out of the draft, but that's a guy late – late in the draft that that you could look for if you're looking for a safety theo jackson from tennessee kind of came on as a senior could be a, a free agent 
if he's not drafted and he could step in on special teams and eventually work his way, you know, into the, into the game running backs. There's always running backs available at the end of the draft. And we're like, why is this guy, you know, why wasn't this guy picked Greg bell from San Diego state, really powerful runner. has got a little bit of wiggle to him and he's got just enough speed where you can see him pounding the ball 10, 15 times a game to help Saquon if they don't pick up a running back later to help take some of the break, you know, take some of the um, load off of Saquon. And that, that would be a good pick. So there's tons of guys that they can, that they can go to. And, and, uh, but uh, yeah, but it's so hard. Like I was trying to project, project Mr. Irrelevant. Oh my God. I mean, I got a name in mind finally, but trying to figure out who's going to be available 250 picks down the road. Whew. It's not easy. Nobody ever gets to drafts, the mock drafts, 100%. I mean, I think no. the first time that happens will indeed be the first time. And uh, that person should go into the Pro, Fo- Ho- Pro right? Fo- Hall of Fame. I, I know, there. right? I mean, they were going to give away, I think it was Warren Buffett was going to give away a million dollars or something to the to the guy who, if anybody got all the first round picks right. And oh, he's wow. pretty safe on that bet, I think. I, that's not, that's not yeah. going to happen. But uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very, if it's there, but it makes it fun. Uh, yeah. You know, that's the thing. I mean, if, if, if we knew what was going to happen, um, it would be very boring. It'd be very boring. So for sure. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I do have, I, I pulled up some names here for pro days. So I don't want to leave you without a real answer to that question. Okay. So let me give you some names on the pro days quick okay. wide receiver, Jalen Virgil from Appalachian state fast guy return guy could go late on day three, not a big name, um, but he's been on radars for a couple of years. He could have came out in last year's draft, but he didn't um, came back for the COVID year. Nolan Turner from Clemson safety, very productive guy at Clemson, but he kind of fell under the radar injuries and stuff like that. He did. He had a great workout. He had a great workout sub four, five 40, Fantastic player. He's a guy that probably get picked a little bit earlier than people thought. John Lovett from Penn State. He transferred from Baylor to Penn State for his last year. Didn't get used a ton at Penn State, but he's a great athlete, and he showed that at his pro day. So don't be surprised if if he got drafted. And one more, Kyron Johnson from Kansas. He was kind of a late add to the Senior Bowl, um, and, and people weren't sure, like, is he a better athlete than football player? Well, he was so good at his pro day. He's basically running like a cornerback out there at 240 pounds. So teams might just pick him in the third or fourth round and say, we'll figure out what to do with this guy, with this athleticism. So he's, he really helped himself at his pro day as well. All right. Final question for you, Chad. Does it make sense for the Giants to trade down or given, you know, where they are and getting this rebuild off the ground, should they just stay put and just not get cute, if you will? Yeah, I think when you're picking fifth and seventh, chances are that you're going to land two two guys that are in your really legitimate elite prospect list. And it's really hard to trade out from that unless you're getting a lot of value uh, in return. One trade I think that would be interesting for them, and I projected it at some point in the past, I think it was my last four-round mock, is if the Saints decide to package the two picks that they got, or one pick that they got from Philly and then a regular pick, if they decide to move up into the five or seven range to get a quarterback with that pick. And in that case, if you're getting two top 20 picks for that, that might be difficult to turn down. Um, but in another situation, like if somebody just wants to trade like two spots with you or something like Seattle wants to move up and get a quarterback and you're going from five to nine and you're like, well, okay, they're probably going to take a quarterback. So therefore our list gets pushed down a little bit. We'll still find a guy at nine. So it's really dependent on how far down you go and what the value is. But again, five and seven, it's hard to fault them if they just don't take the first trade offer because you're getting two guys that you think are going to help your team right away. Going to be interesting, that's for sure. I mean, like I said, always there's always something, some kind of monkey wrench thrown into the first round of the draft. Nobody sees coming. And we all sit there and go, whoa, because it just impacts the rest of the draft. But hey, listen, that's why it's so much fun, right? Right, right. And last year, I remember I got a lot of, I got some tweets and stuff from people because I projected that the, the Giants would trade down with the Bears so that the Bears could go get a quarterback. And I projected that before the draft and people are the Giants don't trade down. They don't trade down. It's not going to happen. <laughs> well, guess what? It happened. It so, happened. Uh, so, you know, that stuff happens all the time. And that's sure. the fun of doing these mock drafts and stuff. Not that you're going to be right because you're right. not. It's just thinking of these funny scenarios and plausible 
but things that people don't think are going to happen. That's the fun of it. So uh, yeah, that's why that's why I, uh, I've got a dream job. It was great. Really do appreciate you coming on with me again, folks. Please check him out. He's an NFL Network analyst. Follow him on Twitter at Chad underscore Reuter R E U T E R. NFL Network provides live coverage of the 2022 draft from Las Vegas, April 28th through the 30th. I know I'll be tuned in. I'm sure you guys will be. Those of you who are watching us, be sure to check that out. And also be sure to check out Chad's work on NFL.com. He's got a couple new stuff, things out. So for Chad Reuter, thank you everybody for tuning in. And Giant fans, we will catch you tomorrow.